Taiga is the premier roller coaster at Linen Maki in Helsinki, Finland. This intimate LSM launch coaster worked wonders for Linen Maki. For years, this popular theme park had a middling coaster lineup, but Taiga finally gave Linen Maki the signature coaster that they deserved. But how does it compare to the other world class coasters out there? In this review, I will discuss Taiga and explain why this coaster should be on every enthusiast's radar. Linen Maki is a super compact park in the heart of Helsinki. The park is located on a hillside and occupies just 19 acres. This presents a lot of challenges for the park when they add a new attraction. Since the park is fully developed, they often need to remove an attraction to add a new one. And in the case of Taiga, Vanka Pudis was removed after the 2017 season. Vanka Pudis was the second and final Premier Rides liquid coaster ever built. The coaster had many of the same issues as the prototype liquid coaster, which was none other than Silver Dollar City's ill-fated Buzzsaw Falls. Vanka Pudis had awful capacity to begin with, but the ride often could only run one car due to sensor issues. The ride also had astronomical operating costs and countless technical issues. In the ride's final years, Vanka Pudis was only open for about a third of Linen Maki's season. The park desperately needed an upgrade and they most certainly got one in Taiga. The coaster was built on the site of the former water coaster, and it's a really neat location for a ride of this caliber. Taiga is located atop a steep hill. Not only does this offer a breathtaking view of the downtown metropolis, but it also creates a really unique layout that constantly changes elevation. You get these sudden speed boosts at random points in the layout as you plunge down the hillside. And since Intamin had so little land to work with, Taiga has a ton of near misses. It is impressive how Intamin was able to cram Finland's tallest and fastest coaster with 3,622 feet or 1,104 meters of track in such a small footprint. They did this by having Taiga cross over itself countless times and also have the coaster travel over both the midway and other attractions. This makes an already intense layout even better because the near misses accentuate the speed and offer visuals you rarely get on a coaster of this caliber. Taiga has many similarities to Lisa Burke's Helix in terms of its layout, placement, and interactions. Taiga's entrance is located across from Linen Maki's ticket booths. Linen Maki sees over 1 million visitors per year, and considering Taiga is now the park star attraction, it is no surprise that this coaster generates the longest lines in the park on a given day. I have visited on a summer weekday and Taiga had 45 to 60 minute waits most of the day. This was a two train operation and reasonable dispatches. The crew usually had the next train ready to go shortly after the prior one hit the brake run. The biggest delay was if there was a guest who struggled to fit, which did seem to happen every few trains. And most positively, there were no delays due to downtime. I spent parts of two days at Linen Maki and I never saw Taiga go down once, whether it be for weather or mechanical issues. The Intamin hydraulic launch coasters and some of their early LSM launch coasters are notorious for their downtime, but their most recent LSM coasters seem to be quite reliable. Just look at Velocicoaster Islands of Adventure for more evidence. Taiga's queue line is pretty neat. It is themed to a nesting eagle, and there are several subtle thematic touches in both the queue line and station. And that's also paired with the solid IMA score soundtrack as well. However, if you want to board Taiga immediately, you do have the option to purchase a skip the line pass for Taiga. This is the only ride at Linen Maki that offers this, and it costs 9 euros per ride. You go up a special entrance and board the next train, and you also get your choice of seats too. In terms of seat selection, I'm torn whether I prefer the front or back, so I split my rides evenly. I thought the inversions were a little better up front, and you also have a superior sense of speed up there. However, the back offered stronger airtime, so I recommend trying both. Taiga's trains are another strength of the ride. They are the same trains Intamin has been using on their most recent launch coasters, and I love these trains. The elevated seats give the seats a floorless feel, and the higher center of gravity makes the turns more intense. And the lap bars are among the best of any coaster. There are no seat belts, and the lap bars contour perfectly the thighs of riders. They will rest snugly in your thighs, but your entire upper body is free 
so you have no trouble experiencing the coaster's airtime and laterals in full. The trains also look cool with the Orange Bird lead car and the lights. Those lights look particularly cool at night. The trains really pop against the sleek sky blue track, and I love the overall aesthetic of this coaster. Once dispatched, Tyga slowly rolls out of the station and suddenly engages the first launch. The delay sort of reminded me of the old volcano, the blast coaster. While the second launch is what gives Tyga its top speed, I actually prefer the first launch. The initial launch track is unbelievably short, so this initial launch packs a wallop. You really get yanked forwards, and it also helps that there's no countdown or warning when the launch will engage. It feels a bit more powerful than the initial launch of Velocicoaster for comparison. You then traverse the first of four inversions, a zero-g winder, and it's actually my favorite element on the entire coaster. This element is taken super slowly, and the funky profiling yields several seconds of hang time. As opposed to most zero-g rolls that are elongated at the apex, Taiga zero-g winder has a super sharp crest. You are flipped to the side of the apex, and the flip itself occurs in the descent. The entrance in this element gives a bizarre upside down pop of airtime up front, and then you get some glorious hang time. Seats towards the back skip right to the hang time. This element offers some of the most sustained hang time of any coaster, and it's made even better by the fact you're staring down the hillside while inverted with just lap bars. You then navigate this banked turn that dives even further down the hillside. The snapping of this turn produces some weak floater airtime, but even better is the pullout from this element. It offers some powerful positive Gs, the strongest on the ride, and I grade out on each ride. It is shocking how forceful this turn is. You then climb up the hill, traversing this elongated S hill. This element pairs decent laterals with a tiny pinch of floater airtime. You then navigate this S bend and 180 degree turn that goes towards the launch track and these are easily the worst elements on the ride. Not only are they rather slow and forceless, but they also have a rattle. As a whole, Taiga is an extremely smooth ride, but these turns and another section of S-Bends I'll touch on in a bit, shake the train. It didn't cause any pain thanks to the super comfortable restraints, but the tracking stood out against an otherwise glossy smooth coaster. The second launch is where Taiga hits its top speed of 66 miles per hour or 106 kilometers per hour. I didn't think this launch had the same power as the second launches in Tyron or Velocicoaster, but it is decent and you definitely feel the speed build up. You then ascend the ride's top hat, where you're brought to the ride's highest point of 171 feet or 52 meters. The view of Helsinki is incredible because of the top hat's positioning atop the hill. It's just a shame you don't get more time to take in the view. The entrance and exit from this top hat pulls some solid positive G's, and then you also get some great airtime over the top. The airtime wasn't quite as strong as I expected up front, it was decent floater airtime that was sustained up there, but the back delivered what I expected. There I got solid sustained ejector airtime paired with wild laterals on the descent. The drop is only 105 feet or 32 meters tall because you pull out atop the Pikahuna powered coaster and then you navigate this giant zero-g stall over to Lareki. This is another wow moment between the incredible visuals and forces. This stall felt similar to the one in Six Flags Great America's Goliath. You had a few seconds of wonderful hang time and a snappy twist out of the element that produced some good laterals. Unlike the top hat, this stall drops you all the way down the hillside. The pull-up blasts you a positive G's yet again, and then you navigate a speed hill. You take this hill at a blistering pace, and it provides a great pop of ejector airtime, no matter where you're sitting. You then fly through an Immelman. Three of the four inversions in Taiga are world class. This is the one that's just okay. You get some decent G's into the element, but the flip itself and subsequent drop only offer some faint laterals. The subsequent turn offers another dose of positive G's, and then you careen over this speedy S hill. This is one of the craziest elements on the ride, as it offers a very strong pop of ejector airtime, probably the strongest pop of airtime on the ride, with top-notch laterals. Intamin is the master of snappy transitions, and this element showcases that perfectly. You then navigate this super tight turn above the station that again pulls some strong positive Gs. 
Taiga then has this elevated S-bend that rides similarly to the one in the first half. Again, it's not particularly forceful and has a shuffle to it, plus it offers a quick break from the action. But you rapidly regain your speed as you rapidly twist down and to the left off this S-bend, diving back down the hillside. This drop is very sudden and the whip in this element is incredible, especially in the back. You get some insane laterals with a pop of ejector airtime there. Taiga then climbs back up the hillside for the last time. You navigate this bunny hill that banks to the left on the descent. Those up front get decent floater airtime, while those in the back get a decent ejector pop. You then twist to the left and navigate the final inversion, this awesome barrel roll. The train is ferociously whipped through the element, which treats riders to some forceful hang time. Taiga then navigates one last moderately forceful turn and then hops into the brake run giving riders one last weak pop of airtime. Taiga's biggest strength is the pacing. Intimate LSM launch coasters usually excel in this area, but Taiga goes above and beyond. This coaster is barely any dead spots outside of those two sections of S-Bends. So what would I rate Taiga? I would give this coaster a 9.5 out of 10. This is the best coaster in all of Finland. The ride's mix of airtime, hang time, laterals, and positive G's is something few coasters can match. Taiga offers a little bit of everything in terms of forces, and it excels in pretty much every area. Pair that with a near perfect pacing, engaging transitions, and beautiful visuals, and you have a truly world class coaster. Taiga grew in me with each rod. Compared to the other Intamin launch coasters I've ridden, Velocicoaster is still king, but I would take Taiga over the others, including rides like Maverick. Formula Rosa, iSpeed, and Taran. That's how good Taiga is. Taiga alone is worth a trip to Lin Maki, mostly because of that insane pacing. So those are my thoughts on Taiga, the Intamin LSM coaster at Lin and Maki. What are your thoughts on this multi-launch coaster? How do you think it compares to Intamin's other coasters? I would love to hear your thoughts about this ride down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.